not forget, because that's the day you can eat sugar. Look at that. <laughs> See how I did that? Oh, I'm a smart guy. I've been doing this a while. Amen. So, anyway, let's uh, get into this message. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash bruises dot pdf. Look at somebody say, the devil uses, the devil uses. who he bruises. The devil came and bruised you just so he can come back later and use you. This is really a part two of the message I did, like the broken message, but I like this title. Yes, Amen. The devil uses who he bruises. Let's talk about this guy. This is a bruised guy. His name was Simon. We refer to him as Simon the sorcerer. The Bible said that he used sorcery and bewildered people to the point to where they thought he was a great one. Now, when we think of, of sorcery, we're thinking of Mickey Mouse and Fantasia. What was that movie? <laughs> you know, with a wand and a hat and he's doing magic. Poof, that's not what he was doing. He was a drug dealer. Simon was a drug dealer because the word sorcery is the word pharmakia. Yeah where we get our word pharmaceutical. And he was giving people medicine and potions to make them, they weren't really getting better, but you know it, what pharmaceutical drugs do, it gives you something else to worry about. <laughs> but he was a drug dealer handing out pharmaceuticals. And they thought he was great because he had a potion for everything. But he heard them preaching the gospel, Peter them, and the Bible said that he believed also and was baptized. Amen. Amen. But something was wrong with Simon. He was baptized and it picks up at Acts 8 and 18. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, what did he do? He offered them money. He said, give me also this power. I can add this to my repertoire. Folk already think I'm somebody. Now I can add this. He said, give it to me so whosoever I lay my hands on, he may receive the Holy Ghost. And Peter looked at him and said, your money is going to hell with you. Thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Why would he think that it may be purchased with money? He's a drug dealer. He's selling feeling. And when he sees people reacting to the laying on of hands, he's like, I need that too. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. This is one of our biggest problems in church. People do stuff and we go off on them, label them or whatever, but we never deal with their heart. Something wrong with your heart that's making you act that way. And this is a man full of the Holy Ghost, Peter, and he said, man, something's wrong with your heart. Your heart is not right. Repent thereof of, thy wick of this thy wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Now watch this. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. So I'm not dealing with the fact that you're selling drugs or was a former drug dealer and now you want to sell the Holy Ghost. I'm dealing with what's wrong with your heart. There's bitterness in you. Undealt with bitterness. Man, everybody looking at him like he's something great, but nobody's wondering why is this man selling drugs? What happened to him? Then he answered Simon and said, Pray ye the Lord for me that none of these things which you have spoken come upon me. His reaction was pretty much nobody has ever wondered why I'm like this. <laughs> Y'all, we're not going to be that kind of church. Right. Amen. I want to know why we do the things that we do. That way.
way we can fix it. Look at somebody and say, the devil uses who he bruises. One of the reasons the enemy hurts us is to use us later for his own plan. Because he is a defeated being, he can only work through people to get his will accomplished. So he can't go around doing certain things. He needs people to do those things for him. So if he hurt someone like Simon, whatever caused his bitterness caused him to want to be better in the eyes of others. So instead of being satisfied being with the guys that's laying hands and people getting filled, he wanted to be one of the guys that's laying hands. Because there was something wrong with his heart. There was bitterness there. Second Thessalonians 2 and 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth. Now this got me because I've never really looked at this word all deceivableness. This is what the devil is planning in, implanting in people. They are totally deceived by what they're doing. Deceived to the point to where you're not able to penetrate and help what's really wrong with them. That's the way the devil wants you. He wants you at the place to where you can accept rebuke. Now, this man was a great one, and I don't know what happened after that, but he was known as a great one, whatever. But when he got rebuked in his heart, he said, pray for me. And that's, that has to be our attitude. When the message on Sunday come for your heart, somebody pray for me. Amen. Amen. Hurting people hurt people. Look at somebody and say, hurting people hurt people. The devil hurt you so you would hurt someone else. Period. That's why he hurt you. That's why he bruised you. So you will hurt someone else. Everything we do against someone is because of something somebody did against us. Can always be traced back to some, something that someone did to you. And especially, especially if you haven't let go of certain things, you're going to react based on that. Yes. Matthew 7 and 12 says, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. This is the law of the prophet. So you're supposed to be doing to others what you will have them do to you. But right. yes, well, why are we so nasty toward each other? Why are we so unforgiving? We don't want people unforgiving to us. Why are we so vengeful and hateful? Why can't we make it right? Why can't we let it be made right? Amen. That's because we're hurting. Something else is wrong. You flying off the handle because somebody rolled their eyes at you? You ready to pull out a gun? Oh, oh do you think she's something? She no, no, no. Somebody else thought they were something and hurt you. That should be a that should be laughable. She smacked her lips. I heard it. <laughs> smacked her lips. He brushed right by me and didn't even acknowledge me. He think he's, no, that's not coming from that. There's gall of bitterness in you. Something happened to you. And you didn't allow the preach word to deal with it. You know, folks can sit in church for years. And the word, and duck and dodge the word for years. Can I keep preaching? It is dangerous to harbor emotions that come from hurt. We can be agents of the devil and not even know it. You can be an agent of the devil and not even know it. 
The devil is using you to upset people and hurt people and you don't even know it. When our spirits are broken and we feel rejected, we open ourselves up to prideful spirits that push us to be better than others. That's what happened with Simon. Spirit, prideful spirit pushed him to be better. He should have been asking, okay, who did y'all study under? Can I go get, what, what is, you know what I'm saying? Like, how did y'all get like this? Instead of, oh, give me that. Can I buy it? And equate myself with y'all? That's what the rich young ruler wanted to know. Jesus, how can I equate myself with you? Yeah, but this comes from a prideful spirit because you were broken. You felt rejected. 2 Corinthians 10 and 12 says, For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they are measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves. And that is not wise. Amen? We don't compare ourselves in here. Everybody's got what they're good at. But it's not a competition. Amen. We don't compare ourselves, but when you feel broken or rejected, the first reaction usually is a comparative one. Oh, they rejected me. So they think there's something. They don't they have no idea who I am. What I'm capable of. These spirits put us on a path of self-reliance and striving to become more. Just to thwart negative feelings of inferiority. Self-reliance and striving. You know, this, this society just, they take, they take advantage of women so much. And it frustrates me. They push women to the forefront, make them career-oriented, make them forget what they were truly created to be. And, and then by the time they realize what they really need, they've gotten so much on them that it's hard to even turn around. They're in so much debt. They just, you know, and so just have strived to be better or to thwart negative feelings of inferiority. They've become self-reliance. I mean, self-reliant and striving. Especially African Americans. You know, they want to break the African American home up more than any. Y'all black folks in trouble. You ain't looked around. Was you at the fair last night? You would have seen it. It's a dirty shame. Folks was texting me saying it's over. What's over? The world. <laughs> And it's black people's fault. Yeah. Yeah. We was watching a parade at the fair Friday go by. And I was trying to count how many boys didn't have beads in their head. Beads. 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 Remember when the kids was, the girls was little, they mama would put beads and then put the little fall under it to hold them up. All these boys, every boy I saw had beads in their head. Boys, beads. You know where that came from? Little Yachty. A rapper. Beads. Beads. You playing a trumpet. But you got a whole percussion section happening in your head. Maracas. And I was like, look at the, I mean, the whole thing. Yeah. It's just our, our, just our culture, who we are. We, we're dying as a people. You know, whenever you forget God, <laughs> Remember, we were the ones that remembered God. Yeah. And the slave 
plantations, we remembered God. We prayed. Those of us that are saved now are saved, most of us, because of the prayers of slaves. I may not get free, but I'm going to pray for a free future for our people. We done got free and now we going to the ancestors and serving the nigglets. Witches and But this is the spirit that puts you on self-reliance, makes you strive. Second Corinthians 3 and 5, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of who? God. Of God. It is God. God is the reason. We can't be self-reliant. I can't get out there and strive to look good in front of people. Where is God in that? Who am I going to give credit to for blessing me? They come into church. Oh, I thank God for all he's done. God didn't do that. You did it. And he never told you to. And you did so much of it. When you heard the preach word, you got offended. Left the church because the preacher wasn't preaching what you wanted to hear. I know I'm preaching in this place. That's okay. When the devil bruises us at a young age, he comes back to see how we handled it. And if we are available to be used by him to harm others. Ooh, the devil. He is a devil. First Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, does what? Walking about doing what? He's going back and checking on the seeds he planted. See what they grew into. The people he violated, hurt, devastated. Whatever he caused happen, to happen in your family, in your upbringing, he comes back later to check. How you handling it? How you doing? And if you can be used by him. Most people that are promoting evil, selling their souls to the devil, or doing evil to others, were hurt by the devil in a similar fashion. Pain put them on a path to show others who they are and what they can accomplish without them or in spite of them. You hear that? Pain put them on a path. To show others. This is why movie stars and actors and all they'll do anything. And they have done. If you if you watching them, they have done everything. Because if they decide they're not gonna do it, there's a long line of folks behind them that will. So they have to do it. And if they try to decide not to do it anymore, we got proof that you did it. And we'll show that. It's a devil. You don't make a deal with the. You really made a deal with the devil. But pain put them on a path to show others who they are and what they can accomplish without them or in spite of them. This path isn't the course that God set for them. They may prosper financially, but their bruises caused them to hurt others and fail God in the end. They prosper financially. But you selling or promoting the enemy. And it don't have to be a movie star. You yourself, us in here. When you get mad, go off, fly off the handle and hurt people. You need to check and figure out why am I doing this? Where is this coming from? You got mirrors in your house? Look in the mirror and figure out why do I keep doing these things? What happened to me that I haven't dealt with? Amen. Matthew 16 and 26. For what? Will it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? 
And what will you give in exchange for your soul? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I made up my mind. I'm not living this life hurt by what happened in my past to the point to where it keeps affecting my future. Some stuff I just have to get past. It happened. I wish it hadn't. But I'm getting past it. Amen. Look at somebody say it happened. And it shouldn't have happened. But I'm getting past it. Yeah. Don't let the devil come back and visit you and bring and check on you to see how you're doing after he has devastatingly hurt you. I'm not available. Amen. <laughs> That's what you got to tell him. No, I'm not available. I took care of that. No, me and the Lord took care of that. Amen. Summary. Oh, it's a long summary. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, okay. Y'all don't have nowhere to go because you can't go eat no sweets. You might as well stay in here. <laughs> you can't have no fun without sweets, some of y'all. It's a long summary because in the summary, I'm going to list bruises. And I'm going to help y'all today. Amen. You know, hey amen. I, I love to come in here and bump and shout every Sunday and dance and, and you know, you know, I like that. We like the, the fast bump music and got a band that can do it and all that. I'd, I'd love to do that, but no. You know what that's going to attract. And you know what that's going to attract. A bunch of folks that ain't dealt with themselves. Right? You're going to look up three months later, a homosexual sitting on every row. Why are homosexuals attracted to that? Because you ain't dealing with this. You don't deal with the bruises, they can come in here and dance and shout all over their bruises. And forget about them. They use church like the world uses the club. People go to the club and do what? They go to the club to forget how much they owe, how much debt they in, how much trouble they in. 30 days before they got to go in, in, to jail. So they in the club, cutting up the club, cutting the rug. Some scissors on the ground just cutting the <laughs> in the pool hall in the dice shack. What are they going for? They going to forget their problems. They going to forget what's wrong in their life. You don't you act up on me. I know some of y'all was in there. God saved you, but you ain't forgot. And that smoking something make me forget it. That's why folks smoke. Yes. Oh, clap. That's what weed, that's what all of that's for. That's why you drink. You're trying to forget what's wrong. Yeah. And now they have sophisticated medications for anxiety and depression and all of this. Now nobody's dealing with the bruises. We were bruised. The devil unfairly and unjustly bruised us. And if you don't deal with it, he's coming back. To check on the bruise. See if it's healed. So yeah. We're not going in the. You know. We're not going to have that kind of church. We're not. Amen. Dancing our problems away. All right. Amen. I know there's a song. You can praise your troubles away. No you can't. That's not a true song. That's not biblical at all. You can't praise your troubles away. You got a light bill you can't pay. I don't care. You can say till your throat is bleeding. Ah, Lord, that bill is looking at you like <laughs> waiting to get paid. You better pay that bill. Some of your troubles you can pay away, but you can't praise them away. Amen. We just like cute little sayings, but that's what they want to do. Come in church, praise everything away, and you praise it away while you in church. But guess what happened when you get in the car and go home? Bill answered the door. You walking through the door. Who answered this door? Bill just, welcome back. Do you have some money? <laughs> That's the only way. So we're not going to be sitting in here doing that foolishness. It just attract crazy folks. 
and turn this church into a sideshow. So we're going to deal with bruises so you'll quit hurting folks. So you'll quit hurting me. I'm trying to help you and I love you. Why you hurting me? Because of bruises. I'm smart enough to know it don't have anything to do with me. You've been bruised. If you've been molested, raped, or sexually abused, physically abused, mentally, or emotionally abused. But once you are sexually violated in any way, the enemy will constantly revisit you to see how you turned out. Are y'all listening? He will make you feel dirty, unworthy, or plagued by sexual sin. This will cause you to hurt others. How? The same way. Yeah. No matter if it was consensual or forced. You are now hurting others by being promiscuous or sexually deviant. Yeah. Everybody you sleep with outside of marriage, you hurting them. You think you the victim, but you hurting them. Now the remedy is deliverance. Look at somebody say deliverance. And I ain't talking about no bucking and shouting. That ain't deliverance. You do that after the deliverance. Go home and make sure you deliver, then come back and buck. But deliverance can make what was regretful or shameful a powerful testimony. You must not allow what the devil did to you cause you to hurt others the same way. Pray and trust God to what? Yeah, depending on how deep you was in it, it may take a while for you to fully come out of it. I wish I could line y'all up and, and put oil on your head and you go home and it erase everything that had happened. No, some of y'all develop with this stuff. Some of this stuff got wired and you got to allow the Holy Spirit time to deal with it. For real with it. For real with it. Somebody violate you like that? That's devastating. Amen. Divorce, wedlock, abandonment, rejection. Any kind of rejection like this is a bruise. Most of us in here have suffered one of these. Yeah. Well, when you have these bruises, the enemy will make you feel like an accident or that you are in the way of your parents' total happiness or freedom. I know I'm teaching. Some of y'all grew up feeling like that. Yeah. Yeah. And once you're older, you'll pass that on to your kids if you haven't dealt with it. The devil will come back and bring depression and anxiety to you because you feel so unwanted or unimportant. He will bring people into your life that will only use you and exploit your desire to feel needed and valued. That's hurtful. Then the devil will form godless dependencies where you use people and feel entitled to do so because of what was done to you. Amen. Amen. Somebody like, this is Sunday morning. Why are we dealing with this? Because look who's in here on Sunday morning. This stuff is destroying us as a race of people and as a church. You know, churches are closing now. When, when the pandemic went on, most folks re-evaluated church and said, is it really necessary? I can sit home and watch this online and pretty much get the same result. Here's the remedy. When you're bruised by divorce, wedlock, births, etc., you must find your true purpose in God's plan. Listen. You cannot replace what is missing with worldly achievements, financial gain, or prominent accolades. None of these will fix the problem. Oh, I like this part. God's creation role for you is the only answer because it was the deviation from the creation role that caused your bruises. 
Do it God's way. And you will be completely healed. Oh, this is a big one. Teen, y'all done dated as a teen. You done dated as a tween. Got your heart broke. Fail relationships. The devil uses these emotional bruises to give you phobias. Gamma phobia against marriage or feel that family life is not possible for you. Do you know, I talk to people all the time and they just don't feel like it's going to ever happen. Now, where did that came from? Why would you be 20 and 30 and 40 years old and feel like family life will never happen for you? What would make you feel like that? Fail relationship, especially one in your development. He will constantly bring fear and sabotage to you to cause you to not open up your heart again. He will make you cynical to the point of ruling out possible relationships because of looks, differences, finances, financial lack, etc. You start picking folks apart because you hurt. Amen. You will hurt people and lead them on only to break their hearts like yours was broken. Now you a heartbreaker. What do you say, heartbreaker, money taker? <laughs> yeah. This is what broken heart, when the devil bruises you, he keeps coming back to check and see if your heart is healed. So he can use you to hurt somebody else. Amen. Amen. That's why we don't have a bunch of dating and hollering at and stuff in this church. Folk get hurt like that. Amen. You better have some good intentions and be ready to go to distance, brother. This is a finish line church. Amen. We got men in here with daughters and guns. Guns and daughters. The only way to overcome this emotional bruise is to overcome this emotional bruise. Give love a try. How many of you got married because you gave love a try? Amen. How many of you, they told you she wasn't the right one, but you married her anyway and gave love a try? Look at that. Huh? Oh, I raised my hand. But a whole church told me not to marry this woman. I, I brought her to church, and boy, everybody had a word from the Lord. Oh, no, she's not the one. And it just so happens everybody with a word for the Lord had a daughter. <laughs> she got to give it a try, man. Open up your heart and allow the power of God to give you courage to try again. Love again trust again. If you do not open up your search ranges options or mindset, you will close your heart off to every possibility. Devil don't want you married. He wants you fornicating. Can I say that again? He don't want you married. He wants you fornicating. Amen. He wants you to get old enough to where you justify fornication. God, if you gave me somebody, I wouldn't be out here doing it. Wouldn't be in these streets. <laughs> you was in the streets. You've been in the streets all your life. Stop that. Don't keep waiting for a word from the Lord because he's speaking right now. Give love a try. Amen. Fatherlessness. Hey, growing up, Fatherless or without a good father. This is one of the toughest things that can happen to you. And I feel for you if you did. My daddy was a good father. He didn't live long though. He died at 53. So I didn't have him as long as I would have liked. But he was a good father. But it's tough when you grow up without a father. This will usually bruise your self-worth and value. So the devil always comes around to make you feel beneath everyone else. And inferior in life. So what does that make you do? Prove. You're proving to everybody. I'm better. I'm just as good. Mm -hmm. yep. 
You constantly seek approval and validation for your abilities, finances, and accomplishments. You begin to do things that will bring you attention and notoriety instead of being content with who God made you to be. No matter what you achieve, the devil will still make you feel inferior, which opens the door for what? Sin. Sin. Forgive your father. Man, you will treat me better as a pastor if you forgive your father. You're going to treat your wife better. You're going to treat your husband better if you forgive your father. Pray for God to give you a forgiving heart and a repentant heart for dishonoring your father. Even if your father is not reachable or deceased, you must forgive him and allow this bruise to heal or the devil will keep injuring you and others. Amen? Amen? Uh oh. <laughs> Church hurt, disappointment. This the devil's favorite. This is the devil's favorite bruise because he can hurt a lot of people through a person that is disappointed or hurt by their church. Yeah, he can hurt other church members. That's the first thing people do. When they hurt by church, they target all the other church members. Now they got Facebook and everybody linked together. Oh, my goodness. Come go with me. I'm leaving because I'm mad. Yeah. yeah, and folks will go because they're mad and disappointed. The devil will use this wound to make you break rules of the very Bible you say you believe in. You will do God's prophets harm and even wish harm on them because of your anger. You wishing harm on people? This puts you and your family in grave danger of witchcraft and de demonic possession. You open the door for all kinds of generational curses to overtake your children when you attempt to tear down or end the ministry because you're upset with it. The devil will even deceive you into believing that you are working for God in the process. Church hurt has caused so many to bring calamity, misfortune, and agony in their lives because they desire to hurt the ones that hurt them. How do you get out of this, y'all? Reconcile with those you believe hurt you. Period. Hey, man, you hurt me. But before you call them and say it, articulate exactly what it was that they did to your own self first. That's the key. Tell yourself what they did. Calm down and say what they did. CD! <laughs> Usually you can't articulate it because you're angry about something else. Can I keep preaching in here? <laughs> Articulate exactly what, what they did to your own self first and most of the time you will see that it wasn't worth your retaliation. Pray to God to forgive you and remove any curses or spells that you open yourself up to by siding with the devil against God's anointed vessels. God has anointed vessels. And I don't want to be on the other side of that. But let God deal with those he places in position. Forgive and move on. No one is perfect and no church is perfect because you and everyone else in there is imperfect. Amen. Like my daddy used to say, church ain't perfect because you in there. Let it go, heal, and move forward in Jesus' name. Matthew 5 and 43 tells us, oh, I hope this helps somebody in here. Ye have heard that it has been said Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, man, this is a hard one right here. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you or bruise you or hurt you. Do good to them that hate you. This last one. Ooh, Jay Bryant. 
and pray for them that despitefully. That's, that's everything I name. Violated you. Took advantage of you. Used you. Abused you. Lied on you. Punished you. Spit on you. Cussed you out. Emotionally abused you. Physically abused you. Sexually abused you. The Bible said what? Pray for them. All that fits in despitefully. Man, this is a tough one, isn't it? Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, the thing I've learned about this passage is you got to grow into this because it's hard. Some of us have been done wrong and it's hard. But if we look at the bad decisions we've made in our life, they're all linked to what somebody did to us. And what this scripture is doing is it's trying to disconnect you from the evil intent of that person so you don't cause evil intent. So you don't have evil intent. You see what I'm saying? This passage is trying to break you free from someone else's evil so you aren't guilty of it. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read this last one again. I need to. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And you know what the biggest thing about this? When the devil comes to check on those bruises he caused, if you're somewhere praying, he sees that the bruises are healed. Amen. Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. Now this message may not have hit you because maybe you ain't been through nothing. I've been through a lot. A whole lot. I've been affected by a lot. And so I have to fight off a lot. Makes you struggle with a lot when you get older. That's why we try to help these young people to not Come on, man. Don't do that when you're young. And so the devil comes all the time to me trying to check on old bruises to see how I'm reacting, how I'm handling things. And when I say the devil, I don't mean, the, you know, the horned image you see. No, I'm talking about it's people that come to test it. That's what I mean by the devil coming. He'll send people to test it to see if you are really healed. We need to make sure our bruises are healed. Amen. So if that's you, you got a bruise, you saw something in these slides, that's you, come on up and just going to trust God for healing in these areas. Man, I don't want my life plagued with bad decisions because of what somebody else did to me. Because of what? I didn't have because of man I'm not doing it I can't do that can't give the devil all of that he don't really have power he's using that and for us that's big you'll never understand my hurt but you definitely understand yours so I'm not letting the devil no you're not changing the direction of my life I'm going to make sure I'm doing it God's way in spite of what happened. And those that despitefully use me, I got to forgive and pray for. Oh, that's tough. But you got to do it. Pastor, they told me I was nothing. They said I was this. and They said I was that. And man, pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Anyone else?
else. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for a message like this. God is hard. Even, even for me to sometimes preach messages like this. Because it's just hard. It's hard. It's hard to us. But you said you are not a high priest that cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted just like we were or we are, but without sin. So you know how it feels. You know how it makes us feel. You know when people violate us unfairly and unjustly and hurt us. It sets us on a course sometimes of destruction to just repeat things and target people and hurt people and our lives become destructive but God that's not what we want here that's why we are here because we want these bruises healed in the name of Jesus so I pray right now for everyone that came up come on lift your hands up and I'm lifting my hands up every bruise that was caused every violation everything that happened to us everything that was done to us. Father God, we come before you right now asking for complete healing of it. Father God, heal it at its roots so that the root of bitterness doesn't spring up and defile and hurt other people. Father God, heal us at the root. Make it better. Make it right. Father God, take it out of our hearts and minds so we don't think about it all the time and the enemy uses it against us. Father God, heal us completely. Wash us. And make us clean so that we can be whiter than snow. Father God, take it away from us and help us, Father God, when it tries to come back to be able to stand and make a strong stand every time and Father we'll give you the glory and the honor for doing it in the name of Jesus we pray amen listen the Lord spoke something in my spirit while I was praying just now and he's basically said there are some things that we need to add to our fast. But it's individually. It's you. For 28 days, there's something you got to let go of. I don't know. It's your life. I can think of a few things for me, but we just, there are things working against what we're trying to do and who you're trying to be and what you're trying to allow God to do. You see what I'm saying? So he'll speak to you. You'll know what that is. But let's let it go. 28 days. Let's, let's not just sugar, but whatever else God lays on your heart, you do it for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hug somebody. Say, God healed my bruises. Say, God's going to use the ones that the devil bruised. God is going to use us. Hallelujah. 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 Whatever the fast is. Some of you watch too many movies. Some of you, hey man, listen to too much music. Well, it's gospel. Well, it ain't saying Jesus. Hey man. <laughs> hey man, you know what you need to do. Hey, right? you know you. If don't nobody else know. You know you. Bread is sugar. You supposed to be letting that go anyway, Jeff. What are you talking about bread? <laughs> Look at somebody. Bread is sugar? Oh, Lord. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> now, if God leads you to let go of bread, let it go. Amen. Amen. Whatever God says, whatever he says, 
Log off social media if God tells you to. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yes. Whatever he says. For if you can't do it for 28 days, you addicted anyway. You got a problem. Let it go. Look at somebody and say, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Hallelujah. All right, Elder. <laughs>